Hi, I'm John Reardon. I've been facilitating effective meetings for hundreds of client teams for the past 20 years. I've been working with a fantastic colleague, Monica Tuckrar, to develop a series of online courses on facilitating virtual meetings. Monica's been a professional facilitator for 20 years herself, working with a wide variety of client organizations. In our 101 course on the fundamentals of virtual facilitation, we covered the essential responsibilities of a facilitator in helping to set up the agenda, defining and carrying out an engaging process for the meeting, keeping time, and documenting meeting notes. In Virtual Facilitation 202, we will be taking these roles and responsibilities to the next level. We are going to take you through how to prepare for and facilitate more substantial virtual meetings, such as a half-day team retreat, planning meeting, or stakeholder forum. In this course, we'll focus on two objectives. The first one is utilizing more advanced techniques such as breakout rooms, collaborative documentation, and polls that will help you make these longer meetings engaging. And we'll secondly give you some ideas on how to facilitate virtual meetings for different purposes, such as relationship building, information sharing, brainstorming, and decision making. Before we get started with your role and responsibilities as facilitator, let's talk about upgrading your tools and equipment. First, consider an upgrade to your lighting. An inexpensive light can go a long way to ensuring that you show up really well no matter what the time of day or night. You can get a desktop stand or a fully extendable tripod if you'd like to stand while facilitating. Speaking of which, if you haven't already, it's time for you to go ahead and invest in a standing desk. You can raise and lower your entire desktop at the touch of a button. It's fantastic. Not only does it give you more options as a facilitator, but it's far better for your overall health and well-being. It's incredibly helpful to be able to stand up whenever you'd like and continue to engage and then lower it back down and sit when you prefer. Another upgrade you might consider would be either a wall-mounted whiteboard or a movable tripod that you can place behind you so that it's clearly visible on camera. This will give you another option for capturing notes, creating visuals, or just posting a welcome sign at the beginning of the meeting. There are links on page 15 of the workbook for some of the various equipment you might want to invest in so that you can be at your best when you facilitate. And speaking of being at your best, there's a self-assessment on page 3 to help you consider what strengths you bring to the role of facilitator. Are you naturally good at connecting with people and helping them connect with each other? Are you a good listener? Are you a detail-oriented type? Or someone who can easily synthesize points into coherent themes? Do the self-assessment and consider what additional strengths you bring to the table. Remember, strengths first. Start by being aware of and maximizing your strengths, and then you can address weaker areas later. Don't try to be someone else when you facilitate. Be yourself with more skill. All right, ready to facilitate? Let's get started.